as a TB survivor, am I at a higher risk for contracting corona? Now, there are two parts to this question. The first is that what you have to understand that the coronavirus, the novel coronavirus is a new virus. No human being has been exposed to this in the past prior to this epidemic or pandemic starting. We have been exposed to coronavirus in the past in the form of uh, the strains which call, cause common cold, as well as the strain that caused uh, SARS and the strain that caused MERS. Now, this is separate to that. This is a new virus. So every single one of us is susceptible to it. Every single one of us is at risk of contracting it. And eventually, when there is an epidemic or pandemic, what the virus does is that it will affect every single individual and the epidemic or pandemic will only end when every single person is has experienced the infection and is immune to it. Not everybody will experience the infection and get immune to it. Some will develop uh, immunity by way of what's called herd immunity. And if there is the development of a vaccine in sight, then that can also render people immune. So every person, as well as a TB survivor, as much or as less, is susceptible to the coronavirus, is at risk of developing coronavirus infection just because it is a new virus. The second part to the question is that that a person either undergoing TB treatment now or who has survived uh, TB in the past may ask is, am I then at risk of developing a more severe infection? If we all contracted, then who are at risk of developing a more severe infection and, and am I one of those? What has been seen from the experience uh, gained from around the world is that the people who are most at risk are the elderly of developing a serious infection with the coronavirus. Um, people who have existing conditions like, for example, diabetes, chronic respiratory disease, cardiac disease, they will also be at a higher risk of developing more severe infection. Um, Younger people fare a bit better. And of course, these are, you know, there is statistics that tells us exactly how much where. So as a TB survivor, you, you probably are not at any greater risk unless there has been uh, pulmonary tuberculosis, which has damaged, you know, some part of your lung. And that may then make you prone to developing a more severe infection than someone who has, uh, you know, normal undamaged lungs. So that is probably one thing to bear in mind. Um, the second question is that as a patient currently on TB treatment, is that one at higher risk for contracting corona? And I think the answer to the first question also addresses this. What are the additional precautions I need to take, if any, as a survivor of TB or as a person undergoing TB treatment at the present time? So the answer to that is that you need to take all the precautions that everyone else is coming. And as we know now, the key ones being social distancing, rigorous hand hygiene, and the use of mask when applicable. So if one follows these, then I think you're doing everything. If there is someone who's undergoing TB treatment at present, then you must continue your medication. Do not discontinue that at any cost. Um, following this, some of the questions is that, I'm feeling very anxious about TB and COVID-19. How can I manage this? Now, this is something that we're facing a lot and everybody is very anxious, understandably, because of the um, you know huge amount of information that we're all exposed to and that we only partly understand probably, and that generates a great deal of anxiety. Um, it is very natural to feel anxious during this time. Uh, what it what is important is not to get overwhelmed by the information that is coming in through uh, normal media and social media. Switch off at times. Just try and do your norm, normal uh, routine things, and which again is difficult because of the lockdown. But you must develop strategies like uh, practicing maybe meditation, maybe yoga, doing a bit of exercise in the house, eating healthy, and trying to detach yourself from the plethora of information that is floating around. I think that while informative can also be very damaging. Thank you. So continuing with the questions, how much does a TB survivor have risk from coronavirus, which shows mild symptoms for most of the cases? So I think this has been addressed in the first lot that uh, the categories which are at higher risk 
and if a survivor does contract a mild, the vast majority will be a mild illness unless there is existing lung damage and that can sometimes um, you know, cause a bit more, increase the severity of the illness. Except for the general precaution against coronavirus recommended for all the public, what should a TB survivor or patient take into consideration? We have looked at this too. It is the same. Is the infection of SARS-CoV-2 increase the risk, increase the reinfection chance among survivors? Now, I think we don't have data really to, uh, to be able to refute or confirm this statement. So I think we have to wait and see. Logically, these are viral illnesses which are very short-lived and the recovery is complete and it renders you immune. So there is no reason for it to increase your risk following the infection of, uh, of a relapse or, or you know, reactivation of your TB or reinfection of TB. That is the key thing to understand that the viral illnesses are very short illnesses. Uh, if the supply of medicine stops due to international, international blockade, how much chance gets worse for a continuing patient in different scenarios? Now, 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 this is not a medical query, really. This is a logistic issue. And for TB, we are all aware that the key thing is the treatment, and that has to be taken diligently. You cannot miss a day. And unfortunately, the, the times are very hard. And, and because of the lockdown, people are struggling to get access to medicines and things like that. And if you miss it, if you miss it, that is not okay. A person who is uh, uh, on first line medication and they miss it for a spell, then, you know, and then you resume and the worry with this kind of uh, stop gap, you know, stop and start situation is that uh, you may get resistant to the drugs. And uh, so the first line drugs may not continue to work. The second line may fail, etc. So, uh, so it is a difficult uh, question with no real good answer from my side because the, the times are such that you know there is no guarantees of medicines reaching, and and that is very unfortunate. If I have TB, shall I test for SARS-CoV-2 uh, immediately, even if I do not uh, have exposure, or I've not come into contact with a confirmed? patient or someone who's traveled from infected countries? Simple answer, no. You do not need testing. The only people who need testing are those who have either traveled abroad, who have, who have had contact with a confirmed case, or healthcare workers who are treating such patients. Um, if you have uh, any doubts, then of course the best is to self-quarantine. You don't need to test unless you have symptoms. If you have symptoms in the current times, suggestive of a viral illness, uh, with fever and a sore throat and breathlessness uh, and feeling unwell, then definitely you must seek medical help. But testing, just because you have either, you know, experienced TB in the past is not recommended at all. I heard that paracetamol and ibuprofen have a relationship with aggravating COVID infection. What should I take in case of fever, pain and inflammation due to medication of tuberculosis? NSAIDs, which includes uh, brufen and diclofenac, have definitely to be avoided. Paracetamol, there has been no data uh, saying that. So paracetamol is still safe to take if you develop fever. Um, I have been diagnosed or I'm currently on treatment for TB. Am I more at risk of COVID-19? We have looked at that. I'm taking TB treatment. Is there any advice on what I should do if I get infected with COVID-19? Uh, now, the COVID-19 is a mild for the most part is a mild viral illness for 80 percent of the people and uh, often does not require treatment will just resolve as a lot of viral infections do and it is imperative imperative to continue your tb medicines what has currently been recommended as medication is the group of chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine along with some antibody uh, sorry, along with some antibiotic like uh, azithromycin, as well as some of the uh, HIV treatment, HCV treatment has been tried and tested. We're still waiting for far more data to come through. Now, as part of first-line TB medicines, rifampicin is particularly uh, um, known to induce enzymes and therefore render many medicines ineffective. And that uh, is, is a, may pose a problem in the later times when using other drugs. But as I say, for the most part, it will be a mild viral illness that will not require treatment. If it does require treatment, you have to seek medical help, medical advice, and uh, and the doctor will eventually decide the the TB medicines along with the uh, treatment for COVID. Thank you.